Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button, it helps a lot. And also keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are after market close on the brutal Monday, October 4th. We're going to take our daily look at SoFi. And uh, I say brutal, I'm sure you know. It was a really rough day in the market, uh, sold off and then really just kind of flatlined for most of the day. Not really any uh, sign of recovery and uh, really just quite quite brutal out there. Um, it is probably worth taking a look at uh, a few things in tonight's video. One would be this daily SoFi chart. The other would be the intraday, just for folks that are finding the intraday interesting. And then I do think it's probably worth taking a look at the IWM. Arc F and then probably QQQ also, just to see where those macro forces may influence the movement in SoFi in the coming days and weeks. Um, but let's just start here since we're here. Now, not a ton has changed. We're basically treating this 1629, and we'll look at this more on the daily, or sorry, on the intraday, as resistance. Uh, you see that body of the candle went right up to that 1629 and uh, rejected off of it, though so it spent some time with, with the wick above there. But um, And then the other thing that we had talked about, I think, on Friday's video was that we were looking for this box, the upper bound of this box, to um, act as potential support. Now, the other question that I had raised in Friday's video was whether or not this wick that stretched down through this gap was going to be sufficient volume to consider that gap filled. Now, I think it's still a question. I think if it does come down to test this as support, which would be about 1561, then that'll tell us a lot. Does it start really coming into this gap again and filling it with much, much more volume? And if so, then like I had talked about on Friday's video, what I'm going to be looking for here is does it continue to catch support on this white uptrend line, uh, which depending on how quickly it comes down to it would probably be something from like 1510 up through maybe 1544. 42, depending on just it just, you know, since it's an ascending line, you don't exactly know when it would come down to meet it or if it will at all. But those are the things that I'm looking for. Obvious, um, obviously, from the bullish perspective, what we'd like to see is 1629 get flipped from resistance to support. It's clearly resistance at the moment. And then it establishing along 1629 to be able to build back towards 1687. Um, and like I said, if it does need to come down more, then hopefully it doesn't need to come down and fill this gap with more volume. But I would just be uh, watchful of that, whether it starts to work its way through this gap or is able to kind of bounce off of it. And then if it does, can it catch this uptrend line? So just repeating myself there, but <laughs> sometimes I end up repeating myself in the comments anyway. So, um, so in case it's helpful to just hear the reiteration of that uh, for anyone. Now, the intraday, pretty similar to what we've seen on poor performance days, you know, slingshot effect, right? Bumped up this morning uh, and looked like it was getting off to a decent start and then just trailed off. Didn't even really make an attempt to hold the VWAP. It flipped it to resistance pretty clearly there. It did try to catch support at the 1629. So uh, we see that. And then it came down and then treated it as resistance and resistance. And it was sitting below the VWAP and it just couldn't even get above 1629 to be able to make an attempt at that VWAP. So um, just a pretty rough day all around. But I don't necessarily think that it's SoFi's fault, <laughs> if you will. Um, but, you know, the market is just having one of those periods of times. That said, I do think that these are healthy pullbacks. I do think it gives opportunities for, um, you know, maybe buying some things at a discount or at least less than you would have paid for them last week. Um, but it's hard to time the bottom and, and to know when you can trust the turnaround and things like that. But, uh, you know, these are the tricky, tricky factors of the market, but the pullbacks are, should be expected and should be considered healthy in my opinion. Um, now let's quickly take a look at SoFi's data in case folks don't want to look at the IWM, the ARCF and QQQ, then they can just finish off the video here. So 
the other thing is um, we have shorts piling in at the moment. Now, I know this doesn't seem like the biggest bump up, but we are getting pretty solidly over that 10% at this point. And last time we got over 10, I think, I'm going off memory here, so I'm not going to be exact, but I think we were in the ballpark of 15, and then it started to peel off pretty quickly, and they started to close up shop and move on to something else. So it'll be interesting to see if it does get up into that 15 level again this time around, what it does, and um, if it's going to continue to plow through or if they're going to peel off again and kind of um, pack up bags and go home. But obviously, because the utilization is very low, or partly because the utilization is very low, the cost to borrow is very low, so nothing really keeping shorts out of SoFi at the moment other than to say, um, you know, maybe the stock will come back with a vengeance or something like that. But you see here in purple, the uh, estimated interest by Ortex, and we're doing this sort of like big cup, <laughs> kind of, for lack of a better term, uh, at, at the moment. So we'll have to see how that goes. Now, to do a quick check-in on the macro forces here, and I'm just going to focus on the daily, because I'm looking for for um, levels on these tickers that, that might start to make sense. So uh, you see this clearly having uh, this range that it's in right now. So to me, this looks predominantly like uh, a range just like this. And so what I typically look for in situations like this, I should extend it out in case it continues in this range for a while, is for it to make a clear move uh, you know, out the bottom or through the top of the range, and that there, if then to pick up and accelerate speed in whichever direction that it uh, that it heads <laughs> at that point in time. Now, if it trends to the upside, I don't know that we would really have anything to base um, anything off of. No, yeah, because last time that we were at, at tops, this looks like it was the sell off of 2020. Yeah, uh, we were in the 170s, so we're fixed pretty well above that now. Now that said, uh, we could look for some additional potential support zones uh, below this if it were to need it. Now, I would look for something right around here and down to here. These are going to be pretty tight in, but there could be a little bit of a band there, as I call it, and then another one right around here. Now, if it ends up needing more support, we can check in uh, at that time. Obviously, if, the, if things continue to kind of tank a bit, then... We'll just be back here taking a look then. But for now, it's just kind of batting around the same range that it's been in uh, since February. So if you recall, there was that big uh, sell-off in March and even February. There was a big struggle. I remember a bunch of my growth stocks were struggling at that point. Um, and then it's really just bounced around a bunch in this range. Um, so if it does make a break to the downside, I look for a quick catch. Best case scenario is catch at high 204s um, down to 201. And then if not, you might be looking in the 190s down to even uh, 189 uh, to begin with. <laughs> so we'll see how that looks uh, in the coming days and weeks. ArcF is obviously Arc FinTech innovation. Now, I was looking at what looked like it could be this nice, almost flat top setup um, or ascending triangle type setup, but um, it didn't get there and has fallen through at this point. So no point in keeping that. Now, this one is still going to hold... Uh, quite true, obviously. Uh, and if we look for catch zones down here, um, oh, sometimes folks are asking this question. So let me just say, now, sometimes I will just take the ending position of the day uh, to the upside or the downside and just put a horizontal line there and see if it lines up. Uh, and if it does, then great. And if it doesn't, then it doesn't. Uh, now, this one is a bit of a mixed bag. Now, what we don't see here is a bunch of resistance zones for this. In other words, there's a little bit of resistance here, but nothing tremendous. Um, there's support here and here, which are great. Uh, I would have liked to see it treating this more as resistance if this was going to be a super strong zone. So um, that's what I look for. You know, if I'm just kind of needing to scroll back and needing a starting point, sometimes I will throw those in. And, uh, and and just sort of see what the present price action is. And sometimes it's nothing. And so if it's nothing, then I'll just delete it, obviously. <laughs> uh, this to me looks like a, like a stronger zone, this 43.69. Resistance, resistance that tried to hold support and then was able to get support. And then it launched off from there. And then even 
over here several months later came down and retested that support here um, so i don't know if it's going to come down that far uh, or not but something to certainly look at i mean this is also certainly in a bit of a range here uh since what what's this time frame here since march so it's it's basically a lot of these things are just kind of moving pretty sideways actually i mean i know it doesn't feel like it necessarily from day to day but a lot of these things are looking like they're moving pretty sideways uh for much of the year actually a lot of these stretching back to march and uh even february looking at the qqq just because that's taking the brunt now we had looked at this before and this to me still looks pretty solid um yeah so these were the bounce zones that we were looking at at that point, the purple potential bounce zones. But then uh, sort of included in that is this overall uptrend, which I think lasts for a very long time. Uh, okay, maybe not that long. Uh, maybe not five years long. But this stretches back. So it first really established in here in like July of 2020. And uh, so it's been in this for over a year. And so we have all these potential bounce zones, including this one way down here, uh, feels way down there. But at this point, it's testing the bottom bound of this uh, up channel. So if there is a channel play to be had here, this would be potentially a really good opportunity for a dip buy. That said, the flip side of any channel is that all channels always break eventually. All channels break. And, um, and so that can certainly be the challenge here. We know at some point this channel is going to break either to the upside or the downside, and it's going to sort of be void. Now, will that be right now? And it's going <laughs> to fall through the bottom and, and bust the channel? That could be. Uh, will it start to recover and kind of head back up toward the, the top bound of the channel, maybe making a run toward the 390s um, in, in a matter of a few weeks? You know, could be the case. We're just going to have to see how it reacts uh, now that it's sitting at this juncture, but definitely an interesting place for it to be in at the moment. Um, all right, folks. I mean, that's all for this one. I, uh, there's only so much that you can do when the market wants to turn red. Um, and you just have to sort of do the best you can with it. I do have videos on the channel about what to trade when the market is going down. And these are basically just inverse funds that you can trade that will go up in price when the market is going down. So if you're just kind of sitting on the sidelines looking for places to place your capital intraday or something like that, then um, that might be worth a look. There's one particularly on growth stocks. And there's one particularly on um, sort of inverses of, of the major ind indexes like SPY and um, or the major ETFs, I should say, SPY, QQQ, that sort of thing. All right, folks. Well, uh, welcome to Monday. <laughs> The week certainly got off to a start, and I hope that you are managing it all right for now. Um, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.